reading of his word. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Lord bless you, Brother Bob. Let's bow our heads in word of prayer. I may like to be remembered in prayer this morning. Our loving Heavenly Father, we come into your praise presence with praises and thanksgiving in our heart, that we could have something in our heart to be attracted to thee today, when all the world is dying around us, Father, and have sold out, Lord, like Esau, for a mess of pottage of the world. We're so thankful, Father God, that houses, lands, and lots, and money, and businesses, and friends, and the things of this world, Father, that make up this world order is not holding us, Father, from crying out and searching for thee and thy word today. I'm so thankful that you have a people on earth today, God, that esteem the riches of Christ more than the riches of the world. Lord, we don't have words to express to thee how grateful that we are in our hearts, that you have attracted our attention today. Father, I thank you, Lord, for each one that's here. See again this morning these precious young people driving all the way in this bad weather from Pennsylvania. God, I, I, I know, Lord, if they could just look in the Word and see why they're, they're doing it, Father. I know soon, Lord, is coming for something all great from thee. Lord, I, I watch and look for that day when you fulfill your promise, God. I pray, Lord, that the day will soon hasten that full deliverance is coming from God Almighty. Lord, I know it as sure as I stand here this morning that this great thing that's been held in store for your little bride in this evening time, and then, Lord, in the days to come, they'll see why that they've been attracted to drive these great distances and seek for this great token. Father God, we pray that you'll bless everyone now that lifted your hands. No, Lord, many viruses and sicknesses going around. And I pray, Father, that you keep us from the sickness. Lord, keep sickness away from us, Father, that we may have our strength to serve you better. Now bless the little bride, wherever she may be, around the world, Bless all of your gallant ministers, Lord. Bless them, each one. And we pray, Lord, as soon this great, mighty thing from thee will come and gather your bride together. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. I'm very happy to see each one of you this morning. Knowing that we're... One more week closer to the soon coming of the Lord Jesus. The noise common to back up his word. When he comes this time, he's coming to back up his word in power. And even we say many times, and, and even the Jews is going to recognize him this time. He's coming such power that even the Jews will recognize him and, and they will get jealous of what the little bride has and will, will cry out to the mighty God, the Messiah, to give them what the little Gentile bride got. So many times I go back in my mind, remember I wouldn't take nothing for seeing those Jews coming over to the Wailing Wall and the Lord would allow me sometime, if I can ever afford it, I would like to go back when I'd have a little more time to stay under better circumstances, not be worried about the church. But I love to go down to the waving wall and sit there and watch them pray. And and, and then uh, what a great blessing it is to know that they don't know who they're praying to, you see. They don't know that the Messiah is the Lord Jesus Christ. And there I could sit and pray and know who I was praying to, who I was talking to. So uh, how grateful we Gentiles ought to be for the amazing grace of Jesus Christ that shined upon a pathway that we might know who we're serving. And I'm so thankful in this hour 
that we're the people to whom God has opened up the book to and revealed the book to. Well, I tell you, there's not a people on earth as blessed like we are today Amen. to be able to have a revelation of the book, a revelation of the book that's been closed through all the generations it was only probed at. It was only probed at. And, but now, but now, after Brother Branham's leaving the scene, the full word is coming on the scene. The full, full word. I, I know that's, I wish that everybody could uh, understand it. the statement that to make if they'd only get down on their knees and pray they'd see that that's in the word and it's supposed to be here. What Amen. the ministry is preaching today is supposed to be here today. And when Christ comes, he will come in the days to come. You remember these things I've told you. You're going to see him come to pass. Christ is coming to back up the revelation. Now, the revelation must be preached before he comes and backs it up. There's three ways that God vindicates a true servant of Christ. The first vindication is that he gives him the revelation. And then the bride... The real bride, if she can sit and listen just to the word, then that'll be a vindication to the bride Amen. because the voice of God is his word and his word is revelation. Amen. Now, I'm not talking about just anybody can say it's revelation, but that doesn't make it so. You see, Christ will come to back up the revelation. Now, there will be many interpretations when Christ comes this time there be many, uh, be many men, no doubt, preaching what they believe is the message, but Christ won't back it up. He will only back up true divine revelation. That's what he's coming for this time, is to back that up. Now, the bride must be constantly in the Word to know the bridegroom. Now, unless you are uh, <clears throat> constantly in the Word of God, constantly in the Word of God, you will not know the bridegroom when it comes. Now, you weigh them words out, I'm saying, those words right there mean something. The bride must constantly be in the Word to know the bridegroom when he comes. Now, Jesus has appeared as the lover of our souls, but now he's coming as the bridegroom this time. And when the voice of God speaks in this day, it will be the voice of the bridegroom. Now the bride has had a... Now them messages right there we can preach on, see? The voice of the bridegroom. Now the bride uh, should and must be in the Word of God. She must give herself unreservedly to the Word of God in prayer and uh, giving up all that's in the world so that she might know the voice of the bridegroom when he comes. Now, there'll be many that, and I'm sorry to say that there'll be many, many that's following the messenger's message, at least they believe they are, that the bridegroom will come and they will not know the voice of the bridegroom. They will think that it's not the voice of Malachi 4 and 5. Uh, they will still be hanging on to the voice of Malachi 4 and 5, and the voice of the bridegroom will be speaking, saying exactly what the voice of Malachi 4 and 5, the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Amen. There was a group of people that came out to the John the Baptist and said, uh, uh, said uh, uh, you're, 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 the, you're the Messiah. Uh, you're you're the you're the Christ. And he said, No, no. He said, I'm not worthy to loose his shoe. And uh, was said, and then they got taken aback because there's a great crowd of people standing around. They had a, the same cult that they got going on today about the Elijah today. The spirit see was there. They spoke to John and speaking. In this day we're living in right now, said, No, you're the Christ. You're the Christ. You're you're him. And uh, now if they believed that. That Elijah was the Christ in that day, and he didn't work a miracle. But he had the voice. See, he was the voice. 
Now, I never saw that before. See what I just told you just a minute ago? You see, Lord, let me say that, because many of sat there and said, well, I don't see no vindication in that, and then Lord let me talk and bring that right around. Now, how many have seen that just now? I see. I didn't know that. Now, as I said, now go back and I'll t- tie that point down since the Lord emphasized that. I said that there's three ways that, you see, if you just say truth, see, just say what's true, you may not uh, understand it, but then God will back that up. And I said there's three ways that God vindicates a true God called servant. The fir- there's three vindications that he uses. Out of the mouth of what? Two or three witnesses. Three witnesses. The first vindication is that he gives that man the divine revelation of God for that hour. And how many of know that God deals with a man, an individual, at a time? See? Now notice here that first he vindicates him by divine revelation. And he gives him a revelation of the word of God for the hour that he's living in. And that man preaches that revelation. Then when that man is trained, when that man has finished his training and God has him ready and it's the season and everything is ready, the people is ready to receive him, then that ministry goes forth after, after he has already given him the revelation. He gives him revelation. Then, then there is the second vindication. God comes and back, backs up that man's preaching by mighty signs, wonders, and miracles. And then, I'm speaking of the hour we're living in now, then the last vindication that there will be on earth will will be that God's voice will speak from heaven. See, God will speak from heaven in this hour, vindicate the true ministry of God on earth today. Friend, I want to tell you something. I I know a lot of things that maybe I say is kind of uh, stunning to you, but... Just like I preached Elijah with Brother Brandon 11 years ago, it was stunning to people, but it comes to pass. I preached to be a real bride, come on the scene, and outpouring the Holy Ghost years and years ago. Brother Prelly remembers, and people called me a devil, said I was a devil. He said no man could get them things that wasn't inspired from the devil, because Brother Brandon didn't even preach him. Well, it's just that it wasn't time. He was preaching it right then, but they just couldn't get it. And these things will come to pass. And oh my, we're living in a tremendous hour, friend. That I, even my own self, when I speak these things, I just have to go back and remember that God given they will come to pass because they're they are so great that your little our little finite minds can't comprehend how because it's a dead now. See, there's no revival. Revival is over. That's why you can't pray like you want to. You can't do what you want to because there's no spirit moving there. See, back when the spirit was moving away, any preacher that could live any uh, halfway life, the spirit was falling, could just get up in the pulpit and just preach and have miracles and everything take place because the spirit was falling. You get miracles and signs and wonders and everything. Now it's hard to do these things. It's hard to pray. It's hard to uh, and then you really have to have something down on the inside to drive for Christ today because there's no revival. But soon, it'll be different. Amen. God will come and back up your sacrifice. Now, notice, let me nail this point down. They said, uh, uh, Art thou the Christ, or aren't you the Lord Jesus? Uh, of course, they didn't know the name of Jesus, the same thing today. Aren't you the Christ, uh, the anointed one that was to come? You're him. And they was teaching that around. So they brought it to, they pinned it down about like today. And they heard about, say, you know, uh, 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 some group of people following John, uh, the Baptist, that say he's the Christ. He's the one. Another group of people said, no, no, that's not it. No, he's only pointing to the one that's coming. No, he's not the Christ. He's, He's making a way for him to come. And there was a big battle, a big conflict among the followers of, uh, oh yeah, it's the same, just exactly like it is today. And uh, so uh, some of those believers came came and they had a little show down there with the prophet about it, John, and said, uh, had a questions and answers meeting. <laughs> and they said, uh, 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 
dear John the Baptist said, uh, you know, some are teaching that you're the Christ. No, no, I'm not him. And others said, what? Uh, uh, they just didn't know what to say. You know, I said, what? Well, you're, you're Elijah. No, no, he said, I ain't even Elijah. Well, aren't thou Elias or? No, no, I'm not Elias. Well, you're one of the prophets, aren't you? He said, no, no, no. And then they really got upset. And he said, well, well, what are you? Who are you then? Isn't it your ministry in the Bible? He said, I'm the voice of one crying in the wilderness. The voice of one crying in the wilderness. What was it? Make a way for the one coming. Oh, friend, there's one coming. There's one coming whose shoe latches we're not worthy to lose. Jesus Christ, the headship coming to the little bride. If I don't say no more this morning, it's worth come. Those words right there are eternal. They'll never pass away. And I'm so thankful for the word of God this morning and to see that John the Baptist, without a miracle, Without a sign, without a wonder, the little bride recognized the voice of God in that day by something down in her. And I, the Lord maybe led me up to say these things that I, I want to uh, speak on a little, teach a little uh, subject here this morning. This morning, uh, attraction in the bride, attraction in the bride today. Now, if you'll open your Bibles. I'm going to teach some good things here this morning. At least I think they're good. Now, while you're opening your Bibles to Romans 8, 28, I have two or three scriptures we want to look at. Uh, Brother Jerry Renner called me this morning. And... Um, Brother Jerry said that Brother McGahey had had a burden uh, for the little group in Tampa. Of course, you know they're sojourning with us looking for this great token that we're looking for, and we seem to have the oneness of mind. And, and he's had a great burden, Brother McGee. He's wanted to move up here, he and his family, and, and but he had a burden for the group there. He didn't want to go off and leave it. So since uh, old troublemaker me was there and <laughs> preached these things, and then I let them have a few of the tapes while there's been a separation, and uh, there's not too many left that's holding for the token. So, and uh, they show them right in the messages and on tapes, but they still just shut their minds up to it, so they're not coming out to serve. So Brother McGee was telling Brother Renner that his burden to stay there is left, and Brother Jerry said he's wanting to give up his job, and and his wife just had a, a baby, a nice nine point nine pound baby, and uh, that's uh, he's real happy about it. Boy, first one in the family, and uh, Brother Jerry wants to leave also very soon. Did I say something wrong? Uh, uh, you got to watch me, you know. <laughs> I'm, I'm a subject to say anything, like preaching the other night, and I call it the Great Dane Church. Uh, uh, well, I got to thinking about it. Maybe that was wrong, but I know it's a, the biggest dog I know of is Great Dane. So my mind's on the word, see, and I had this wrote down here, and I... Uh, a lot of times I don't announce things I want to because when I get my mind on the Word, I want to go right ahead with it. And then when I break my spirit and look down in my mind, just my, uh, sometimes I think it's just better to forget the announcement than go on preaching the Word. Amen. Uh, but anyway, I have to push that back. And my wife said, now don't forget that. So I got it wrote down here. I had to look twice to see what that was. And Reiner and Brother Wren, now they want to be leaving as soon as possible, and you know what that is, to I mean selling a home, and then they've got their life savings tied up in their home, and that that is a, a, a big thing to just uproot from your 
of friends and your relatives and everything and everybody just when you start to do that well then you get this good cool small side you're making a mistake you're going to get in trouble and and then the devil just gets upset and he'll do everything tell you oh you're making a terrible error and people call and say boy brother lambert's all messed up and they'll, they'll tell you anything you know if not not that i i, I never asked nobody to come here but uh and Pete, when you start to try to move closer to Christ, then you expect your father, your uh, your mother, your sister, your brother, your wife, your husband, your uh, neighbors, your friends, and and the the, the devil's got to have some way to get at you. So he's helpless, spirit helpless, unless he's got it, unless he's got a tool. Amen. And so he can. Uh, he got to have a tool, so it takes a human being to uh, to speak to speak to you. So he has to get a human being, and it's usually someone that's close to you. And it's always or you can always tell uh, when it's in your heart to do something, and it's in your heart to do it. And then if somebody tries to talk you out of it; it'll upset you and grieve you. They go show you right there that that's the enemy coming trying to trouble you. See. And he, 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 that's the way he tries to snare God's children. God will put it in their heart to get closer to the Lord or do something, and he'll use everything. When you see everything just coming against you, then you know right there, drive right on through the children. Drive right on through that thing because that's the devil, see, trying to come to hinder you. And uh, he'll say, well, what we eat, what we drink, what we put on, well, how will you do this, how you do that? And uh, then you get thinking about it, and you get thinking, well, I've got nice here and everything going easy and everything and he'll show you uh, show you all kinds of different angles to keep you from getting in the plan of God so they requested prayer that we pray for them that uh, they'll be able to come here as soon as possible so maybe Lord would work it all out and be with them uh Wish I could do more for the little bride around the country right now. And I know there's many things coming up that's going to try to catch the attention of the bride. And I want to speak on that one week. The Lord gave me something and the message I never saw before. Uh, where will the bride gather and how will she gather? It's a marvelous. Uh, a lot of people don't believe there'll be any gathering of the bride. That, uh, well, it's. We'll get around to that one day. Now, I open you. I hope you got your Bibles open now. And I probably forgot half the things that I should have said. Romans eight twenty eight. You know, I can uh, feel for Brother Branham. Just think, a lot of times, say, I come to service and and then uh, speaking before people. Can you imagine speaking before 15,000 people and uh, no education or nothing, and you trust God for inspiration. You don't sit and just write down messages. and You trust God for inspiration, knowing that you got all in 15,000 people there and you got say uh, uh, 30 preachers back of your back I believe just contrary to you do some of their congregation down there that's bitter against the Jesus name got oneness of the God it's some over here just hate that see the serpent doctrine and have heard you tape and know what you preach it and you're up there and you see all this coming in from here then you get this spirit back here then you feel that and over there, and then out in the middle there, you know that there's some there that's for you. And those things just uh, reach up and grasp a hold of your mind. No wonder Brother Brandon would say the things that he said. A lot of times you hear him on tape, and he'll be talking. He won't even know what he's saying. And people, uh, people will uh, write in questions and say, well, did you mean this, Brother Brandon? Or uh, he said, did I say that? I heard a minister had Brother Branham back and said, well, Brother Branham, uh, you said that on tape. He said, did I say that? He said, if it did, I'm wrong. My, I didn't know I said that. And many times he goes back on tape. Uh, no, not, not that 
the, Brother Branham's doctrine's not wrong now. Brother Branham was a human being. So if you don't watch out following Brother Branham, see, it's the fallible man with an infallible God. Amen. Fallible man. Brother Branham was a fallible man. Fallible. He made errors. He made mistakes. He made all kinds of mistakes, see. And he had an infallible God that was dealing with Brother Branham. Now, when the infallible God got to operating on Brother Branham, when it comes time for the infallible God to move in, that's the eternal. Whatever was said there is eternal. But now when the infallible God is not working, and Brother Branham's just an ordinary man with the gift of preaching, there's error in that. Not in the doctrine. Not in the revelation. There's no error. But he would say, he'd get along and he'd say, and Elisha. Well, it was Elijah he was preaching on, but he said Elisha. Then he went on and he said, and Jacob, it was Isaac that he was talking about. And then he went on and said, and Rebekah, it was Sarah that he meant to say. How many understand that? And then he said, and it, uh, 300 never bowed their knee to Christ. Well, questions come in. Brother Ben, the Bible said, sure, he knew it was that. If you'd asked him outside, how many was it that uh, Jesus uh, in that day said hadn't bowed a knee to, he'd say 7,000. But there... It was just a man said 300. Now, I know when I feel spirits raised up in the congregation, they jump up and they just get so excited to think that they was more spiritual than Brother Branham because they knew that they was only, they were 7,000. I feel that spirit, you know. I, boy, I tell you, I, I'd sit and I'd feel all in spirits and I'd just agree. I've sat in service many times and cried that my eyes were swollen together, feeling in spirits, and then go out and have God speak to me supernaturally and tell me about the congregation. I've walked right out of the congregation, Brother Bram's congregation, right in Jeffersonville, walk out and the Holy Ghost speak to me and said, they don't even know what I'm talking about. Yeah. And they go over and then be tore up for days, eyes all swollen together, and, and go home sick over it. But what was it, see? Carnal, carnal people's mind. Well, listen, uh, our spirits ought to, ought to get it down on God's honing edge and hone it out and get it sharp, see? And, uh, but, well, there's so many, much we can say, and uh, God's prophet's resting in his rocking chair now. I, Lord, have mercy, friend. You, you just think about me. It scares me to death to think that one day the things that you're hearing here is going to go all around the world. Amen. See? Amen. And I wouldn't want to go out and face the audience as critical as it today, for there's nothing in the world. It, 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 Want me to do that? No, friend. Can you imagine? Listen, the preachers are more critical right now than they ever have been in the history of the religious world. People has heard Brother Branham's tapes and tapes and tapes and tapes. Now you must be a, a, a walking tape. You must be the Bible. <laughs> Listen, you've got to know everything that's on tape and everything in the Bible. You've got all these different interpretations to face and all the different preachers. Now, who would want to pray, God, uh, you, listen, have mercy. If God uses somebody in this hour, and I believe he will, God, have mercy upon that poor man. Have mercy upon him. If he don't have somebody praying for him, I don't know what's going to happen. That's right. Because there's never an hour when it'll be so hard to face an audience like it's going to be faced today. How many understand the climax we're coming up to? That's why I say any time that you see a man that's striving out and pushing out, trying to make him something and, and tell you all, just back off from it. God ain't in it. He's 10,000 miles away from it. Any man that's got any revelation at all that sees the price that's got to be paid today and see the great climax is coming to would scare him to death to want to go out and preach the gospel today. How many believe that? So and you see somebody raised up, somebody ever raised up in this church again and pushes out there, oh, I've just come to press Almighty God and this and that and all, you know right God ain't in it. It's 10,000 miles away from it. Amen. Knowing that you add one word to this revelation, one word, only three times in the Bible did that ever take place. In the beginning of the book, God Almighty, the first messenger, came down in Eden and gave a message. And he said, change it and you'll die. 
devil said, you won't surely die. He won't really take your name out of the book of life. Go ahead and preach. Did he? Why, I thought us into total chaos. Brother Bram said, every ambulance siren that went on, every hospital, every cry, every pain, every automobile wreck, every drunk and everything was caused by that creation uh, next to a man there, the beast told the woman it wouldn't really be that way after God said it would. That's the first of the Bible. In the middle of the Bible, another messenger came down from heaven. Jesus Christ said, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God must man live. Amen. See? And then at the end of the book, what happened? Here it come again out of the mouth of three witnesses. And Revelation said in this book, Blessed is he that readeth, blessed is he that heareth the book, and if any man will add one word to this divine revelation that come from the messenger of the hour, Amen. add one word to it or take one word away from it, I'll take your name out of the book of life. Now watch here. The devil comes along with the preachers today and tells them, and they know down their heart they don't really have a call of God. They never met Christ, see? And, and, and they, they, but they want to be a preacher. They just got a desire to get a hold among the people. And they want the supernatural of God. See, they crave that, see, because they're an amateur God themselves. Did you know man is an amateur God? See, he's a creator. That's why he makes all these buildings and cars and everything. He's a creator. And so there's also something in man that he wants to be a somebody. Every man that's born thinks he's some special gift to, to the earth. That's a, that, and today especially. They've got combs that long, carry a mirror around with them and just like a woman. See, that every one of them thinks that they're a God's gift to the earth to women. How many believe that? That's the, that, why? Because he's an amateur God, see? And uh, that, that's the hour that we're living in. And then the preacher, but he may not carry me around a comb and think he's so handsome and everything like that, because he may be bald-headed. But the thing about it, he'll, wanna, he'll, he'll manifest the other part of God. He'll want to get a hold among the people and be their God. See what I mean? He'll get him a ministry. He'll get him a ministry. I'll be a minister. I'll, I'll, I'll get people to look up to me. And what he do? He starts out, gets him an interpretation of the message, and starts winning converts to that to get him a ministry. How many see that? Right. Oh, friend. And God said if you add one word to this revelation after it come or take one word away from it, I'll take your name out of the book of life. Any man to see that today, brother, that never stood in the presence of Christ with the divine call of God, it scared him to death Amen. to want to go out and handle this man's message. It wasn't the man's message. This message came from Almighty God. Amen. And to add one word to it or take one word away from the revelation, because if you take away from the revelation, then you have no power over the Antichrist. But if you stay with the revelation, you can have a victorious life over the Antichrist. And that's what the devil wants to do, is to get the revelation, tear the revelation up, do away with the revelation. Because if he can get you off of the revelation, then he can defeat you. Amen. Well, now let's look in the Word. Ah, there's so much in this message. I was telling brother, coming back from up in Vermont, brother Heath. I said, this message is so deep, so vast, so wide. I said, my, uh, you just have to be elected to God to to to, to handle it, or you're just going you're going you're going to mess up. If God hadn't handled, it's too great. Is that right, brother George? It's too great, too deep, too wide that unless God has elected you to do it, you'll never be able to handle you'll mess up you'll take away from it as sure as the world and i if i honestly if i didn't hadn't stood in the presence of god and heard his voice and called me to do it i would what i would do and i would preach some if i believe i had a call i'd preach some little messages or something or some little thing that i knew was right stay right with that and leave it alone i wouldn't touch revelation now let's read in uh uh, Romans 8, 28. I'm sure that you know this scripture well. What is he say? Well, why don't 
see what it is now. When I look down the notes there and see I got back there, God help me. I don't want to ever do that. I'm going to let somebody else announce things. So I had the Spirit going along there, and, and then I'm a, an inspiration preacher. See, that's that little bit that stole my mind. It's just confusing. I can't find myself, see. That's why they should never, no matter what it is, nothing as important as God's Word. See, this little thing like that, look down, then it's throw back there, and look at Brother Renz, try to remember what he said, see, and it's throw me all off. So I'll be sure to let one of the other brothers announce those things so it won't get me confused. Uh, I'm simple-minded. i got one eye, see. I'm a one-eyed man. I, I, I'm so dumb and simple that I, I just have to keep my mind on the spirit, or I'm just lost. I, I, can't, I look at you, I couldn't even think of your name. Romans 8, 28. Romans 8, 28. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called, and whom he called, them he also justified, and whom he justified, them he also glorified. Let's bow our heads just a moment. Now, Father God, I believe you give me something here for your children here this morning, Lord, and I pray, God, that you'd help me to find the presence of the Holy Spirit in my speaking, that the people, Lord, may not hear me, but they may lay hold upon the, the voice of the word revelation of this hour. God, help them to hear the voice of God today speaking through the word of revelation. Now, Father, we need revelation more than we need anything in this world. It's more powerful, more precious than our raiment, or silver, or gold, or, or apparel, or houses, lands, and lots, and whatever it is, this is more important. Now, Father, bless thy word in Jesus' name, and bless thy minister. Amen. Now, as I said, attraction in the bride. Now, you know that we're not here but chance. We just didn't happen just to be born in this hour we're living in. We just didn't just happen to have the kind of parents that we had and the kind of grandparents that we had. We just didn't happen to be short or skinny or tall or fat or have blue eyes or brown eyes. This is all foreordained by God, the Creator. And uh, you take uh, the word attraction, there has to be something in you before you can be attracted to a certain thing. Different individuals are, tra are attracted to different things. Some may be attracted to mechanic work. I think Steve here is a mechanic. Some may be attracted to mechanic work. Well, there has to be something down there that God given that man to attract him to mechanics. And he'll always have something in life that God has given him, an, an ability. Some have a carpenter ability. Some of them have a... a, a a carpenter to be contractors and uh, uh, different things that we have in life that God has given us and usually uh, we'll be attracted if you're a carpenter you'll be attracted to a hammer and a saw there'd be something about you when you're little you just like a hammer and a saw and you take a, a man's mechanic you he'll all the time be trying to fix mama's lamps or mama's light switch or something around the house or you you take a man that's a uh, it's going to uh, be a creative houses thing. You know, so you start creating around the house when he's a little fella. And you, you watch it, and you pretty well see what your son's going to be before he grows up. And he'll start uh, being attracted to those things. He'll just love to get the grease on him. and Or if he's a carpenter, he'll just something about sawdust, the dust, the custom of saw. It, it's just music to him. See, whatever it is, we'll find out that in our... Uh, life of growing up, we'll find out we're attracted to certain things. Now, uh, coming over in the spiritual side today in the bride, now there is an attraction in the bride today. There is something that is attracting the attention 
of the bride. And looking in this scripture here, we find out that we're not here by chance, that we're not just here uh, uh, not knowing why we're here, but God says here in Romans 8, 28 that there is a class of people that's going to be on earth that God foreknew, that means foreknew, he knew you before. Amen. He knew you before, and the word before means before you came to this earth, he knew you before. And Jesus said to those that was following him, the disciples said, have not I chosen you from the beginning? Have not I chosen you from the beginning? And one of you hath a devil? And Jesus knew, the Bible said that Jesus knew from the beginning who it was that would betray him. Now, if I, uh, I tell you, children, that takes all of, of man out of it altogether. Takes man all that out of it all together. And he said, those whom he did know before they came to earth, foreknew, foreknowledge we call it, foreknew, pre-foreknew, before the foundation of the world, he said, I have called them, see. And not only has he called them, but he has called, predestinated them, and the only way that God could be a predestinator is that God would have to be so great, he would have to be infinite, that he would know you before you was ever come from your mother's womb. So God, an infinite God, by foreknowledge, he could predestinate. That's what makes him a predestinator is because that he knows all things from the beginning before there was an end to it. See, it was already ended in God's sight before it ever ended because he saw the end. He saw the beginning of the book and the end of the book. He was the author. It said, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and he was also over in the ending of the last book of Revelation. See, so by foreknowledge, God could predestinate a certain group of people on earth and why has he predestinated you as his son and daughter of God today? For one reason, for his purpose. You are not born here to just fill a seat in a certain congregation around the country. You're not born here to just uh, till the ground or, or be a mechanic or whatever it is, but God has called you for a purpose. And he has called you, how did he call you? He had your name on the Lamb's Book of Life and the Holy Spirit came and called you to be conformed to the image of his Son. That is the calling, the high calling of the bride of Christ today is to be called by the Holy Spirit for a purpose. And the purpose is that the Holy Ghost wants to conform you and make you into the very living image of Jesus Christ. Why? Because we are coming to the top of the, we are at the top of the shoulders of the body of Christ and the neck where the head is going to come down and fit upon the neck the body of Jesus Christ. So we must be conformed in the image of the body of Jesus Christ. We've got to be conformed up to that today to catch the headstone. That's why there will not be a great multitude and multitudes going to rapture. Why? It's because they are not uh, for they are not predestinated and foreordained to yield their lives over to Christ that he might conform him to them image, his image. See, God is going to take a bride and it's going to be the cream of the crop. He has a whole church to pick from, and he's going to pick the five best virgins out of all of them. one of those. Amen. Not that I mean five, maybe 5,500. I, I wouldn't know. All I know is uh, I'm like a brother, uh, he's a little boy, uh, uh, Gregory. <clears throat> if only one goes in Connecticut, Brother Lambert, I'm going to be that one. I said, stick with it, son. You'll make it. That's what it takes, see. You. Knowing that you are going to be that one down your heart you believe that and you know that, you'll be the one that will go. Well, 
to think that God has a purpose in your life today, and that is that he wants to conform you to his very image. I don't know of anything in life, brother, that could even come up to touch that, to think that you have a blessed hope that Jesus Christ, before the foundation of the world, wanted to create you and conform you to his very image. How many like to be like Jesus Christ? Oh, now that is the calling of the bride of Christ today, and that is to be conformed into the very image of Jesus Christ. Now notice here that whom he called, he also justified. Those whom he justified, he has sanctified. Those whom he sanctified, he has already glorified. And when he do it, before the foundation of the world, you were justified, sanctified, and placed in Christ before the foundation of the world. It is not of him that willeth, nor of him that runneth, but of God that showeth mercy. Now, look at here. The Bible said, whosoever will, let him come. Now, that, that is the church. Whosoever wants to can be a Christian. Whosoever wants to can come to Christ. Whosoever wants to can have everlasting life. Whosoever will, let him come and accept the blood of Jesus Christ for the remission of his sins. But see, he cannot, he can only accept that. He can only look to the blood, see, by faith. But the only uh, terrible thing about that in this hour that the five foolish virgins, they really can't come under the blood, see, like the bride today, but they have to go through the tribulation uh, uh, to, for their souls to be purged because they, they didn't have the revelation of the blood of God today, see. It's a different hour and a most treacherous hour we come to now because we have come to a, a turn in the corner. A bricklayer can go down the line pretty good, but when it comes to turning a corner... Brother, I tell you, it's hard to turn a corner in a building. And that's where we're at is the great climax of the end of God's plan of redemption today is where we lap over after the seven church ages and come into a new day, the bride age. And that is altogether different. They are a special class of people all to themselves, see. And this is hard in my preaching and teaching of the message, which is the message of Brother Branham. I have none of them. But it's so spiritual, so deep, so different. It's hard for them to grasp the two covenants. There is two covenants. There's one covenant of whosoever will, let him come. Now that is second resurrection. Whosoever will, let him come. Listen, for you, as that's why I believe as long as you're in your right mind, accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior and profess to be a Christian. Now that does not put you in the bride. That does not put you in the body of Christ. The body of Christ is the first resurrection. Now we get a little church doctrine here this morning. Mix it in here. The first resurrection is the body, the bride of Christ. That is foreordained and predestinated before the foundation of the world to be conformed to his image. See? They become the word of God for their age. Martin Luther's age became the word of God for his age. That was the body. The sanctification, John Wesley's age, they be, the, John Wesley and they that followed him became the word of God made manifest and made, made uh, manifested for that age. They become the body. See, they were foreordained and elected to be the body of Christ. But notice here, it's real wide at the bottom. It's real wide at the bottom. Why? Because the bloodline is not polluted. Unbelief is not as a strong See. And then it comes real wide, and as more word comes, more word comes, it's hard to find a real believer of the word. keeps narrowing down until it comes to a pinnacle. comes right up to a pinnacle of trying to find somebody that will stay with the word of God. Now, you can see that not many are going to make that. How many say amen? Right up the top of the pinnacle. Now, they become the word of God for that age, the body of Christ. That's the bride covenant. God has called a body of believers out of each age that he's foreordained and predestinated. But there was many under Luther's that under Luther's age that was not foreordained to be the bride and they come up in another resurrection, second resurrection. In other words, what I'm saying is every age produced foolish virgins. Amen. 
Every age has produced foolish virgins. Now in this age, we come right up to a most treacherous age of all because the gift of God has come down from heaven. The Christ, the, the anointed one, Christ, the Son of Man, Christ revealed in human flesh, coming back. This is the most treacherous all uh, hour of all of them. But whosoever will, let him have in their mind. Let them accept Jesus Christ in their mind. Let them come to a right attitude that they're lost in their sins and they have need of a Savior. Let them accept Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. That's a Christian. That doesn't mean that he's like Christ, but by his profession, he's accepted Christ as his supreme sacrifice. Now, if that man dies right there in his right mind that he accepted Christ as his personal Savior, he's saved. He's saved, brother. He knows he's saved. Yes, sir. He knows in his heart he's come to a place where he has accepted Christ. Now, that has nothing to do whatsoever of him going in the rapture or the first resurrection. The first resurrection is to the elected of God that has been elected to make up a body out of seven different church ages. That has nothing to do with it. That man must come before the bride of Christ at the end of the thousand years at the white throne judgment. See, then there, if they have ever heard the truth and, and rejected it anyway or mistreated the bride, then, brother, that will even be a no. That personal contact that they had in their mind of Jesus Christ as their personal Savior Brother, it's not, it's not a, an, oh, God, let me drive that down. It is not an unconditional covenant. But the bride has an unconditional covenant. She's already stood her judgment in Jesus Christ at Calvary. Amen. My brother and sister, don't you never get your eyes on a certain brother of this and that and say, I don't think they're going to make it, and this ain't going to make it, and that ain't going to make it. Brother, let me tell you something. If that election's there, brother, I tell you, they'll make it. I don't care what you see. Brother, we're made up of an outward man and an inward man. That old outward man may not look like much to you, but down on the inside, brother, is an elected son and daughter. God, they're going to go. Amen. Election is first resurrection, and it has nothing to do. Whosoever will, let him come. Whosoever will, let him come. Except Christ is his personal Savior. But, brother, in that day, if you've ever mistreated the bride, if you've ever done something to the bride and hurt them in any way, or if you have ever turned down anything that they tried to tell you and rejected as truth, I want to tell you something, brother. Whatever you had, there will be a hell in that day. It will not hold up in the face of Jesus Christ. But, oh, brother, there is a group of people on earth that has been elected and foreordained to make up the body of Jesus Christ. And it's not a him, a, a him that willeth or him that runneth, but God has shown mercy and put your name on the Lamb's Book of Life, stand from the foundation of the world, and God has called you and predestinated you to be conformed to his very image in his heart. Amen. Brother and sister, there will come forth a bride conformed to the very image of Jesus Christ in this hour. And it's not of him that willeth or runneth, but it's God that showeth mercy. And where is, oh God, where is the mercy seat? The mercy seat is over the covenant. Amen. The mercy seat in the Leviticus a law was standing over the covenant. And what was the covenant? It was the Word laid in it. Brother, mercy is in the Word of God today. That's why there is nothing outside of the Word of God today. Oh, brother, we need the Word of God more than we need anything else in life. We need the Word of God. The mercy seat. How blessed it is to have the mercy seat. So when you receive the Word of God, you receive the blood of God, and blood is mercy. When you receive the Word from the prophet, you receive the blood of God. And when you receive the blood of God, you receive the mercy of God. So mercy is in the bride. My Lord, the Bible said, blessed are the merciful. <laughs> you didn't hear me? I said, the Bible said, Jesus Christ said he went up on the mountain and seeing the multitudes, he sat down 
and began to teach them. He said, Blessed are the merciful. Oh, you didn't hear that. Oh, you didn't hear me. I said, Jesus said, Blessed are the merciful. For they shall attain mercy. Who are the blessed are the merciful? He that will hear the voice of God in the prophet of God today and receives the message of the hour. They are the merciful. Blessed are the merciful. Yes, the Bible said blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see God. How the only way that you can be pure in heart that is to keep God's word. He that keepeth God's word is pure in heart. And there was only 120 that kept his word. And they went in the upper room and they saw God. Came on the day of Pentecost. And they were all filled with God. Blessed are the pure in heart. They shall be God. Let that out. Oh, how many want to see God? Brother, way to keep your heart pure to God. Today is to keep God's word. Yes, sir. Mercy, mercy, mercy. Lord God, mercy. Mercy seat is over the ark of the covenant. Mercy is in the ark of the covenant. Oh, where is mercy today? It's in the bride of Christ. Friend, let me tell you something. It don't pay to touch the bride. It don't pay to touch one of God's elected. Jesus Christ said it would be better for a millstone was hung around your neck and you were cast into the depth of the sea than to offend one of the least one of these that has mercy in their heart. Oh, think of how God looks over that little bride where the mercy seat is today. I tell you last night, I believe it was, I was thinking on the greatness of God, how he loves that elected bride. Oh, friend, I tell you, it's death and eternal separation from God to touch one of the elected of God. That's why we need to wear our words and be careful because the very thing that you're saying to somebody, that child might be elected and God might turn his wrath upon you. We're living in a fearful hour when the wrath of God will abide upon the children of disobedience. Disobedience to what? Disobedience to the revelation that's coming forth from the mercy seat. Hallelujah. Amen. Brother, I want to tell you something. That mercy's in the bride. Mercy's in the bride. We need to get a respect and an awe of the mercy of God today in the bride of Christ. Oh, friend, when you think of the greatness of God today in the Word and in the bride of Christ, it should awe us. To think of a millstone be hung around your neck, and then you'd be cast in the sea. To send one of the least ones that's pure in heart. Oh, friend. Well, we see one group, one group in this hour that is foreordained and elected of God to be conformed to the image of Jesus Christ. And it's not a hand that will to him to run, but of God that showed mercy before the foundation of the world. He had in his mind, listen, in the beginning, the Bible said in 1 John 1, in the beginning was God. In the beginning was God. And the Word was with God. And I want to tell you something. Look here. And what is word? It's a thought. What was that word there in 1 John 1? In the Greek, it's logos. L-O-G-O-S. Logos. And a logos is a thought or an expression that came out from God. Jesus Christ was in the beginning with God. And the word was with God. All right now. Why are we attracted today? What is it in the bride that's attracting her to the revealed Word of God today? Why is it? Why is that? That there is just a certain class that's going to hear God's Word. He that is of God heareth God's Word. He that is of God heareth God's Word. See, when was he with God? You had to be with God in Christ before the foundation of the world to even hear God today. Amen. You have to be in Christ 
as it was in 1 John 1. In the beginning was God, and the Word was with God, and the Word was made flesh. Now, if we have got to find out where we begin at, where we had our beginning at. Yes, sir. Listen here. The Bible said that Levi paid tithes while he was yet in the loins of Abraham. That was his great, 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 great grandfather. Is that right? Yeah. But Levi, Levi paid tithes when he was not even born yet. It was 400 generations away. 400 years or more. Think about it. Levi paid tithes while he was let in the loins of Abraham. Where was my son Mark and Timmy? They was in my loins. They was in my father's loins. They was in my great-great-grandfather's loins. Right. And they've only been manifested for this hour that I'm living in. Now look at here. Before you can come to God in this hour, you had to come from God. If you didn't come from God, it's one thing for sure. You're not going to have anything back there to take you back to God. Yes, Lord. yes sir. The Word. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. Now, now we see something here. Our natural birth tops out our spiritual birth. See? Where was he? You was in your father. And then before that, you was in your grandfather. Before that, you was in your great-grandfather. Before that, you was in your great-grandfather. Is that right? And then you come out, you was like your father. And then somebody said, that was living there, said, uh, 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 you know, I, I knew uh, your father's father. And you know, you're just like his father. And then if there's somebody around and said, yes, and you even remind me of his father. You have the kind of nose. You act like he does. He was a carpenter. And all of them sons down through there, they've all been carpenters. How, amen. amen. What is that? That goes to show you that something down in you all the time was the hunger and thirsting for something and you didn't know what it was. Amen. Is that right? Amen. Something was in you was hungering and thirsting and you didn't know what it was. What was that? That was attraction. Something down you was being attracted. The bride of Christ today is being attracted, you see. There's something that's attract, attracting the bride today. Now let's look over here in, in John and 8, and we'll read the scripture. Don't you just love the word of God? Amen. My Lord. John 8. Just a little, how many stuffy? Let's see your hand. Just kind of stuffy in here for you? Well, maybe it's just me. John 8, 42. Jesus said unto them, If God were your father. Now, this talking about the Spirit. Amen. Amen. Jesus said unto them, If God, if God were your father. If God, if God, now that word if is a big thing. Now they spiritually, they claim God is their father. Now watch here. Now see, they claim to be in the loins of Abraham uh, like Levi was. See, they know about Levi. See, that's what they're going on, Levi. They know Levi was in the loins of Abraham. How many here know Jesus or taught Abraham our father? Abraham our father. They claim to be in Abraham. See, they taught Abraham, Moses, Abraham, Moses. And now here, here's the word coming on the scene. And Jesus said to them, if, oh, let's read all that. It's so good. Uh, 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 oh, here it is, right up here. Uh, verse 37. I know that ye are Abraham's seed. Now, he's talking about the natural seed, Abraham's seed. But look at here. Abraham, after Sarah died, he married a woman by the name of Keturah and had seven other sons, or nine, I don't remember which. And they was Abraham's seed also. I know that you are Abraham's seed, but you seek to kill me. The reveal words. See, he was the revelation. Amen. And, and because my word. Now what? Oh, here it is. Amen. Oh, Rick, you didn't hear that. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God. 
This Word was always God. Amen. Do you understand? This Bible is the Word. It was always with God. And God caught a prophet, put him in the great spirit. He went into the great spirit of God, and he caught the Word in the spirit that was always there and brought it down and wrote it out. Amen. But it was always God. Is that right? And Jesus was the Word, and the Word was God. Now listen what he tells him. He said, but you seek to kill me. See? Verse 40. The Word, see? But you seek to kill me, the Word, a man which has told you the truth, which I have heard of God. See? Jesus was the Word, and he caught the Word of God. He was the eternal Word of God. Is that right? But the Word was always God. See, we didn't just happen to have the Bible. Friend, don't you see what I'm trying to say? This is God! It was always God that's going to judge the world. They ought to cherish the Bible. We say, well, we just happened to have a, a, a prophet that wrote this out. No, it was always God. And the prophet got in the spirit and heard the word. And he wrote it down. Amen. See? Now watch here. But now you seek to kill me, a man that has told you the truth, which I have heard of God. This did not Abraham. And in other words, you claim your father's Abraham. said, Abraham, do what you're doing. Amen. You, did, you do the deeds of your father. Now he's going to get down to business. Amen. You do the deeds of your father. Then said they to him, We be not born wrong of fornication, see. We have one Father, even God. Now they was claiming that they was with God before the foundation of the world. And here was the Word made manifest, the Logos that come out from God. Amen. And they're claiming to have been right there with the Logos. They're claiming to have been right there with God. Now watch here. Your soul wasn't with God before the foundation of the world. Your soul, your spirit wasn't with God before the foundation of the world. Now if someone sat in here that has that, maybe this is for you. If you thought you was with God, that means your soul, your spirit was with God. No, no. No, your soul and your spirit wasn't with God before the foundation of the world. But you was the Word, glory to God. You was the Word before the foundation of the world. Glory. Oh, Help me, Lord. Friend, I don't know what that don't do. You bet. If you got something down the inside, that'll make something leak. See, it wasn't your soul, your spirit that was with God. No, you was the Word that was with God. And here was a, a bunch of people that claimed to be uh, claim to be the children of God, and here was the Word come on the scene, and they claimed to be what He was, and they was uh, they were seeking to kill the Word. And the same thing in this hour that everybody claimed to be a Christian, they ought to see it claimed to be Christian, and the Word come on the scene that was with God before the foundation of the world, and they sought to kill it. Jesus said. Uh, you're, you're not of Abraham. You're, your father's not God. See? For you, I know that you're not a God. Why did he know it? He knew that he come from God. And he knew that he was the Word of God. He knew that he's with God. He said in St. John 17, he said, Father, restore unto me the joy that I had with thee before the world was ever made. Let me go back to that joy that I had with thee before the world was ever made. See? What was it? Jesus Christ saw himself in the Word. He saw himself in the Word of God. And he knew he'd come from God. Then these men started to fighting his preaching. They started fighting his ministry. And that's why he could tell them that. He said, you claim that Abraham is your father, but you don't do the works of Abraham. He said, Abraham, Abraham rejoiced to see my day, and he saw it, and he was glad. Amen. 
This did not Abraham. Said you claim that God is your father. You claim it. You claim that God is your father. But in him whom God has sent, you believe not. See? You claim that God is your father. But he said, now I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to tell you who your father is. Your father was a lie. Boy, if that wasn't a rebuke, brother, I'll tell you that I busted his eyes and cut off his head and bashed his head in if God hadn't, hadn't stood with him there. That's all. Do you realize how they hated Jesus when he said that? said, come on, I want to tell you who your father is. said, your father is a liar. Can you imagine that? Boy, you call my daddy a liar? You know, down south you call, uh, uh, there's some men sitting here, brother, that will shoot you. Before they say, you call their daddy law. They fight. And here was Jesus said, I'm going to tell you, you say that God is your father. But I'm a man that's told you the truth. And you go about to kill me. See? They say, who go about to kill you? Nobody's going about to kill you. He said, a man that told you the truth, you go about to kill him. He said, now I'm going to tell you who your father is. He said, he was a liar. He was a liar from the beginning. Amen. He was a liar, and he abode not in the truth. Amen. And the works of your father ye will do. Amen. Now what was the work of the father? Of the scribes and the Pharisees that was talking to Jesus. What was the works of their father? Changing the word of God. What is still the works of the devil today? Changing the real divine revelation of the word of God today. Amen. Perverting the message of the hour is the works of the devil. Amen. I wonder if that text won't be preached again before Jesus comes. Amen. I know that you say that you're of Malachi 4 and 5. I know that you say that you're a Malachi 4 and 5. And you claim that God is your Father. But the works of the Father, God, you will not do. These signs shall follow them to believe. Amen. But the works of your Father, you do. Persecuting the real elected by the death has the works of the Father. In other words, you listen to that message I preached on, prove your Father. I preached the message of who is your Father. Jesus said, I know who your father is. Don't you see what I'm saying? That was the word. Now that's the same thing the bride is going to be. Amen. She knows she's got to look in the book and find her place in the book. And she'll look back and know where she came from and where she's going. And then she'll look out there and know where you come from and where you're going by the words that you speak. Amen. She'll say, I know who you are. I know that you claim to be of God. I know that you claim to be of Malachi 4 and 5, but the works of your father you do, and I'm going to tell you who your father is. Amen. The devil. Oh, yeah, that'll, be, that'll come on the scene as sure as the world. The revealed word will sure reveal that because that's where Satan is working today is doing the works of the father. Amen. The father, the scribes, and the Pharisees, Satan himself. Perverting the real divine revelation of God. Now watch here. Verse 42. Now notice here that how many believe that Jesus was a man? He was a God man that the Bible said he learned obedience by the things which he suffered. And by the things which he suffered he became perfected. And then, since he became perfected he became the author of eternal salvation to them that believe. How many believe the scripture said that? Absolutely. Now look at here. Jesus Christ was a man. He was a God-man. But he came in subjection to his Father. And he learned obedience by the things which he suffered. He became obedient to the will, and the will of God is the Word of God. He Amen. became obedient to the Word of God. Now, if Jesus Christ made himself in subjection to the Word of God, how about you and I? If we claim that we're of God and was with God before the foundation of the world, we ought to be yielded and become obedient to the Word of God. See? Now notice here, in verse 42, Jesus said unto them, If God were your father, if he was, 
If God were your father, you would love me. You would love me, for I proceeded forth and came from God. Now, that's the bride. Unless you can look at that scripture and find yourself there, not just saying, well, I'm there. No, you must believe that you're there. You must have revelation in your heart that that's you. This is the bride. Verse 42 is the bride of Christ. Don't you see why Brother Brown said, when the bride finds her place in the Scripture, something's going to take place. You have got to look in the Scriptures and find yourself there. Put your name there. You have got to become part of that. See, Look here. You will love me, for I proceeded forth and came from God. Neither came I myself, but he sent me. And Jesus said, as my heavenly Father sent me, so send I you. See, same thing. And you have got to recognize yourself in the word of God, just like Malachi 4 and 5 seen his place in the word of God. How many say amen? amen. All right, you've got to find your place in the word of God. See, and by faith, you know that you're there, see. Look there what faith Jesus Christ had. He said, I, I know that you say that Abraham's your father. But he said, I'm going to tell you who your father is. You think that wasn't positive speaking, friend? Do you realize what I'm saying? Amen. Jesus Christ was the word. He recognized himself as the word of God. And he could look at something like that and judge it. Yes. The Bible said he's the spirit that judges all things, yet he of himself is judged of no man. Amen. Jesus Christ, being spiritual, could judge all things. He looked at them and knew that they did not come from God because they was rejecting the very, very thing that come from God, which was him, the word. See? Look at there. I proceeded forth and came from God, neither came I myself, but he sent me. Verse 47. Listen here. He that is of God heareth God's words. Ye therefore hear them not, because ye are not of God. What he was saying was, you was not with God before the foundation of the world. You was not with God. You was not in the loins of God. Now, in this, in this sense, it's not the loins of God, uh, but uh, it's in the bosom of the Father. They were in the mind, in the great thinking of the eternal Spirit of God. You was a Logos. You were the Logos that came out from God. You was the thought of God. And then his thoughts are, oh, my Lord. His thoughts was made flesh Amen. and expressed. His thoughts were spoken and expressed when Jesus Christ came forth. He was the revelation of God Almighty. Amen. My Lord. And what is the bride? The bride is to be the revelation of God Almighty Amen. for this hour that we're living in. Amen. Word. Logos. Thought expressed and made flesh. The Word of God made flesh in the little bride. Friend, we're living in tremendous hour. There's going to be so many scriptures fulfilled in just a short six months or so. There's going to be something. All scripture shall be fulfilled. The bride is going to come on the scene and manifest a portion of the Word that she's to manifest. What's it going to be? A seven-course full meal. From Genesis to Amen. Revelation. The seal, you think the bride ain't going to be something? Amen. She ain't going to be just a, a part, like Luther had, just a part of Wesley, just a part of what the restoration of gifts was. Oh, God, she's to be the full manifestation of the Word of the living God. My, my mind can't Amen. help my mind, Lord. Amen. Do you believe? Amen. All right, Jesus came from God. He knew that this group that was listening to him that was fighting his ministry could not have come from God. Impossible, because he knew that he was sent of God. He knew that God was dwelling in him. He knew that he was the Word of God. How could they be of the same God when they were seeking to kill him? So therefore he could say what he said. Therefore I say, you are not of God, because him whom God has sent, you believe not. This did not Abraham. This did not Abraham. Now, that's the same thing that the bride has got to do. And let me tell you something. The bride, as they say down the south, will never mount a hill of beans. 
until she looks in the Bible and finds, his her, finds her place in the Bible and believes that she is that one that's spoken of here this morning we're speaking about. Amen. Then, brother, when you can believe that and have confidence in yourself that you came from God and you go back to God, I tell you, brother, there will come, a, there'll come an hour when people get a revelation of this and you talk about the devil putting himself in reverse, he's going to put us there. Amen. He's going to put himself in reverse and begin to back up. When somebody looks in the Word of God and really believes that, brother, in a reality, something is going to take place. Now, Jesus is saying, in essence, what he's saying is, no man can hear, no man can really hear the divine revelation of the hour unless he came from God. There's only one, and you, you've got to come to a place where you can rest in that. It's not a hymn that willeth or him that runs, but of God that showeth mercy. And who art thou, O man, that judges? Will not God have mercy upon vessels to whom he will have mercy? And will he not have wrath upon those to whom he will have wrath? And who art thou, judges, and saith God, should not show mercy to this one? Or, in other words, God, you should take that man back there. He's a nice man. He's a good man. He gives this and that and everything. And, Lord, I thank you you ought to show him. That's none of your business. God knoweth the heart. It's him a willeth. It's him a willeth, not him that willeth, nor him that runs, but of God that showeth mercy. And he showed it before the foundation of the world when he wrote your name down in the book of life. Oh, friend, how well I love the Lord. My Lord. Now look here. Jesus said, in essence, what he said. You cannot hear the real revelation of the eye. You cannot really hear the real revelation of the eye unless you was with me before the foundation of the world. You had to be in the same mind. Hello? I said you had to be in the same mind. My Lord, the same mind that Christ was before the foundation of the world. Don't you see what happened on the day of Pentecost? They got in the same mind that God was before the foundation of the world. Amen. Amen. My Lord. They was at oneness. And we were all one with God before the foundation of the world. And when 120 got that same mind of God, Brother, there come a sound from heaven like a rushing mighty wind and filled all the house they were sitting in. Filled them all with the Holy Ghost. Amen. I don't know where it's done you any good, but boy, that's done me good. Amen. I, uh, let it come here, Lord, that every person here get in one mind and one accord. See, they was in one mind. God all had one mind before the foundation of the world. And the day of Pentecost, I never saw it before in my life to just now. But on the day of Pentecost, they got in one mind Amen. and one accord. And what happened? Suddenly, brother, down the Amen. Oh, friend, let it come here to this assembly Amen. that we'll get in that same mind and one accord. Yes. It'll come as a sound from heaven like a rushing mighty wind when it does. Amen. Oh my! Don't you know that every one of the every one of the bride is an attribute from the mind of God? And there was only one mind. Amen. Ooh, my, I tell you, friend, that ain't, if you can receive it, that ain't skin meal. They was in. Uh, God had one mind because He was one Spirit. And every member that goes into the body of Christ of all ages was part of that mind. My Lord. And in the end time, the bride becomes the full mind of God. The head comes down on the body. My Lord. What did I get into? Now let's see if you understand. Let's see your hands. My I said, I ain't going to preach nothing. How can I hold it back? I, it never come for me. I didn't know them things this morning. Oh, Amen. my, do you realize what I just said, friend? Glory. Not even knowing the words it was saying and just saying them as it come to me. Look what God said. We're living in evening time when the head, yeah. 
command that God is coming down and hooking up on the body. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. My, pinch yourself here this morning. Are you here? We're living in the hour when the mind. Let this mind be in you which was in Christ. Amen. And the head, the seal, the headstone has been rejected. But there had to come a ministry on the earth to introduce the bride to the bridegroom, the head. Look here. And then the head, the oneness of the mind of God is going to come down upon the body. Then he'll say, speak, bride, just speak. Let there be light and there will be light. Let there be light, let there be blindness, there be blindness. Let the crippled walk, let the blind see, let the dead move. Body of Christ of all ages was part of that mind. My Lord. And in the end time, the bride becomes the full mind of God. The head comes down on the body. Oh, Lord, what did I get into? Now, let's see if you understand. Let's see your hands. My, I said, I ain't going to preach nothing. How can I hold it back? I, it never come for me. I didn't know them things this morning. Oh, my, do you realize what I just said, friend? Not even knowing the words it was saying in, just saying them as it comes to me. Look what God said. We're living in evening time when the head. The mind of God is coming down and hooking up on the body. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Ah, pinch yourself here this morning. Are you here? We're living in the hour when the mind. Let this mind be in you which was in Christ. Amen. And the head, the seal, the headstone has been rejected. But there had to come a ministry on the earth to introduce the bride to the bridegroom, the head. Look here. And then the head, the oneness of the mind of God is going to come down upon the body. Then he'll say, speak, bride, just speak. Let there be light and there will be light. Let there be light, let there be blindness, there be blindness. Let the cripples walk. Let the blind see. Let the dead be raised. Why? It is the voice of God coming from the mind of God. Oh, brother and sister. The mind of God. One mind. One accord. My friend. To thank what greatness the depth of God for the bride of this hour. When the very head, the very, the mind is in the head, and the head is coming to the body. No wonder he said, as my heavenly Father sent me, so send I you. Don't you see that there's never been a ministry on the earth like it? And when the head comes down the body, what happens? He'll suck the rest of the body from the grave. Amen. Oh, Why? Jesus said, marvel not what I said. Oh, marvel not at this, for the, when he called Lazarus from the grave, he said, marvel not at this, what I said, Lazarus come forth. He said, the day cometh when all that are in the grave will hear the voice of God. Some will rise to the resurrection of just, and some will rise to be condemned. What is it? The voice of God is in the mouth, and the mouth is in the head, and the head coming to the bride. So the voice of the bridegroom is in the bride. Amen. Amen. My line upon line. I know I act silly, but I tell you, when I see something like that, I never seen. I see every time that I preach, I get a little bit of inspiration. I see something I never seen before. It just keeps coming. You say, "My." Now you just—it's got to be revealed. That's all there are to it. How many believe they was in the mind of God? My Lord. Yeah, Lord. In the mind of God. Now, could you imagine? There stood a religious group that claimed to be in the mind, the same mind 
that Jesus was in before the foundation of the world. And that mind was, and, and God, the Bible said there, is no unchanging as God. There is no variableness with God, neither shadow of turning. And there was Jesus said, I was the Logos, the word that came out from God. I was with God, and I, and I was God, and I was made flesh for this hour. And I was in the mind of God. You claim to be in that mind of God. Now, bring it down there. You claim to believe. You claim to be in that mind of God, but you're not. Amen. Can you imagine God with that mind that was manifest in Jesus Christ and that religious sector claiming to be in that same mind? Amen. No, sir. Right. Impossible. And so it is today, my dear friends, that no matter who says, I'm of Christ, I'm of Malachi 4, I'm of this, I'm of that, brother and sister, if they do not the work of Jesus Christ today, being the revelation of the Word of God made flesh for this hour, and they fight the true revelation of God, then they are not of God. Now, one, that doesn't mean that they're all of the wicked one. It does mean that they are either of the wicked one or they're either tribulation bound. Because we must find ourselves in the Word of God, which was in the mind of God before the foundation of the world. Now, i got something. Over in Genesis 1, 27. You know, surely there will come a time when people want to hear these things. Surely all the seals have been revealed. Surely somebody around the country and around the world will be hungry for revelation. I mean, to me, this is more than life. Is just to be able to see in the Word of God the revelation. Now, Brother Brown said of all the miracles that Christ ever done for him and all the great gifts, he said he thanked God more for revelation than anything else. That that was uh, more, he was more thankful for that than anything else. Now notice over here in Genesis 1 and uh, 26, God said, let, let us make man in our image. After our likeness. Now, that sure wasn't two other gods, either. Amen. Have dominion over the flesh, over the fish and the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him, male and female created he them. Now, I want to get down to my subject that I was starting on. Kind of get off a little bit maybe. On what is the attraction in the bride that's attracting her today to Christ? What is it? So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him, look out, male and female created he, him. Amen. Amen. Male and female, God created not only him, them. Plural. T-H-E-M, them. It didn't say, and God created he, him, male and female. Read it again. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he, him, male and female created he, them. That's two. Is that right? But yet, uh, if you'll read up here, uh, I'll show you the mystery of the Godhead. I've never seen the mystery of the Godhead in 1 Genesis 127 before. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he, him, Jesus Christ, God, them. Now see, that's where they get the mystery of the Trinity. There's a, looks like a Trinity there, and then there's the oneness of God. How many see that? 
Right there for you. So God created man in his own image, and the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. Now this created he them, male and female, this is Eve. When God created, spoke Adam into existence, he created Adam, and in Adam was Eve. Amen. Now notice here. Eve was in Adam in Genesis 1.27, and Adam, Eve in Adam, this created being, Adam, was in the perfect image of God. Amen. He was in the perfect image of God. Eve was perfect in God. Adam was perfect in God. There was perfection of their spirit. See? They were one in God. Eve was one in Adam, and Adam is a type of Christ, and Christ is the second Adam, a type of the first Adam. He came to undo all that Adam done and make it right. Now watch here the next verse. God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful, and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. How many like to be like that? Well, that's where you're supposed to be. You're supposed to have perfection, and this is perfection. How many believe that the bride of Christ is coming to perfection? Let's see your hand. How many here that believe that this is perfection? Yeah. Uh, what was Adam? Look here. We're in Genesis, the first chapter. Amen. And Genesis is the seed chapter. Is that right? Genesis is the seed chapter. Is that right? And Genesis is the beginning. Now, is it not strange, concerning, think it not strange, concerning that God sent a prophet, Malachi 4 and 5, to return us back to the beginning? Amen. That doesn't just mean the beginning of Pentecost, but it means the beginning. <laughs> and what happened in the beginning? <clears throat> what happened in the beginning? God said, let there be light. Amen. Come on. He said, let there be light. Okay. And there was light, and light is the revelation of the Word of God, and the revelation of the Word of God was with the prophet of God, and the prophet of God, and amongst all this denomination of darkness, said, let there be light, and there was light. Now, what was the next thing? Before there could be an Adam, there had to be a light. Oh, God. Oh, Amen. Amen. Is everybody here this morning? I feel like it's some of you here and some of you ain't. If you ain't, you're missing out on some things. Let's all get the same spirit. How many want to go back to the beginning? Huh? The Bible said that Genesis, uh, Brother Brown said Genesis was the seed chapter. And before you can have a, a spiritual Christ, a spiritual Adam today, you've got to have a seed to get at. And Genesis, it was in the beginning when they had the right seed. Is that right? And God said, let there be light, and there was light. Now after light came, what happened? Adam came. Come on now. Hallelujah! Glad you're here, Brother Bill. After light came, Adam came. And before God said, let there be light, there was darkness over the earth. Before the prophet of God came with light, there was darkness over the domination. There was no manifestation of Adam at all. Is that right? But oh, he 
said, let there be light about the evening time. The path to glory you will surely find. You know, ain't it pitiful? Here we sit up here, this little old girl. I know what the world is going You a bunch of little crazy things in there. Who that little bald-headed preacher up there hollering, carrying on? Who does he think he is? The son of the king. And look at all the people out there driving here and there and holl hollering and laughing. And, and it, well, it looks silly, don't it? But oh, put it in the word, my. Yeah. Put it in the word. And then, oh, you just, you know it's right, see? I know that I know that I know that I know it's right. Yeah. In the beginning, God said, let there be light. Yeah. Oh, what happened? And when he said, let there be light, he separated the light from the darkness. Amen. Amen. Huh? Amen. Oh, my. Before Adam come, God had to separate the light from the darkness. Amen. Brother, what fellowship has darkness with light? Ye are the children of the light. Ye are the light of the world. A city that fell on a hill cannot be here. Amen. My Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Does man light a candle and put it under a bushel? No. They set it up on a hill, up on the lampstand. And ye are the light of the world. And uh, ye are not of the world. Is that right? But the darkness that's separated from the light and is continually separating from the light today. Brother Bam said, there is a man here who can't turn on the light. He said, you go down in the basement, don't turn on the light, but you go there and just put an ear. Put your ear down. What do you hear? Things are crawling in an old, damp, misty basement where there is no light. Roaches. Tom had a bug. Ooh, I hate them old long palm had a bug and the old curves coming out. Creepy fingers. I used to come in. Uh, uh, we used to come in and come in our house and for it. We had little holes in the windows. Cheapest house we could find it. I thought, what crazy carpenter that made them holes in screens. Then palmetto bugs come in. They lived in the darkness. And when you come in, open the doors, there'd be hundreds of them. Hundreds of them on the beds, on the tables, and everything. Oh, my, my wife hated them palmetto bugs. She'd scream. She'd go and get her house coat and put on a, and a palmetto bug jump out. And I'd know what happened. I heard that big scream. You're talking about moving. She could move when them palmetto bugs come. And oh my, go laugh, laugh about the palmetto bug. Jumping out of the clothes. Jumping out from underneath the covers. And jumping out of the closet. Jumping out of your clothes. Palmetto bugs. What is it? And come in, you snap on the light, and they go everywhere. And what is it? You, you get a little assembly going, and the first thing you know, the palmetto bugs get to going. Amen. They get around there and they slip over here, slip over there. Huh? Amen. And if you don't turn on the light, they just keep having a big time. Amen. They just multiply and get bigger and get bigger, and they have a really a revival. Don't they? Boy, they just run through the pots and the pans and everything, through the dishes, through the cups. Huh? And they're, what, they're using everything that you're using in the house. And it's just a, an ob, uh, uh, offense to you. Uh, palmetto bugs and roaches is an offense. Is that right? It's something you don't want around the house. Oh, Amen. Amen. Name, nothing as terrible as these roaches that's running around today with all these interpretations of God's prophet's message. And all you need to do is turn on the light. Let there be light. And old roaches scatter away. Because they don't like light. And I'm so thankful that God said, let there be light. And there was light. And after he got light, he said he was going to create a man. And when he did, he created him in his own image. <laughs> oh, glory. <laughs> don't you give me that stuff you was already created before light got here. Don't you tell me all that stuff you was down in the promised land before. Oh, God, give me a voice to cry that around this world. Brother, that's what the world needs. They need to hear the message of the hour. Have you received life after that the prophet of God come and brought life? Yes, sir. No, sir. After light came, he created a man in his own image. 
And my God, I'm so thankful that when God sent a prophet, the word of the Lord was with the prophet. He said, let there be light. And he's creating a bride, a masterpiece in his own image, in his own likeness. Do you believe? Yes, he said it. He said, let there be an Adam. And there was an Adam. And he created Adam, both male and female, created he them. Notice here, he was a perfect creation of God. When the light came forth, when the light came forth and Adam was created, he was created in the image of God. And when he was created in the image of God, what did God say? What was the message to that creation? What was the message to that perfect creation of God that came forth from life? Dominion, power, and authority over the earth, over the fish of the water and the birds of the air and the cattle of the field. What was it that the Son of Man, the Son of God, the Son of Man in this hour, Malachi 4 and 5, why did the man say, I take every spirit in here under my control? Why do you think it's strange that the bees went back to the nest? Why do you think it's strange that the, that the bull went back and laid down? Why do you think it's strange that squirrels came into existence? Why do you think that a fish on the water was created? Amen. Just a, a God wanting to do something? No, brother. It was to give the sons of God a revelation of the Son of God. Yes. Why? Why did Jesus walk on the water? Why did Jesus break the bread to the multitudes? Why did Lazarus say, come forth? And then he said, marvel you not at this, the works that I do shall you do also. And greater works than these shall you do, because I go to the Father. Amen. It ain't so dull and boring after all, is it? This is the most exciting thing that I ever got a hold of in my life. Is the revelation of God for this hour that I'm living in. Well, what was? Adam was a perfect creation of God. And it, look here. It was the perfect creation of God that had dominion over everything. Oh, what's the attraction? What is the attraction? What is the attraction today in the bride of Christ? What is attracting the bride of Christ to Christ today? What is that? That's, what is that in the bride that attracts that bride to Christ, the bridegroom today? Well, you know, here, let me say this. God then took out of Adam. After he created Adam in his own image, then what did he do? He created Adam. He made him a, a body to dwell in, an earthly body. He put him in uh, uh, Adam. He put him in the earth. He took him out of the dust of the earth. And put him in the earth, uh, uh, earth body, and then he put him to sleep. And when he put him to sleep, he opened up his side and he took a rib from him and he made a byproduct Eve. Now notice he had already made Eve perfect in Adam in Genesis 1:27. Then, brother Bob, if it was so perfect, yes, it was. There was God over the earth, and I want to tell you in the name of the Lord. That's exactly where the bride of Christ is going to come to with the rapture. She's going to have dominion over the fish. She's going to have dominion over the birds there. She's going to have dominion over man. Amen. She'll have dominion over every spirit. Amen. Every created spirit of God, they're going to have dominion over it. That's why Brother Brown said, I take every spirit in here under my control. Well, you said, was it? Yeah, I guess it was. They dropped dead. They were smitten blind and everything else by not believing it. There was nothing could move that he didn't have control of. He could, the angel of the Lord said, if you say blindness, it'll be blindness. If you say death, it'll be death. Then 20, 30 of them paralyzed, uh, fell right out, had to pack them out. Seen them paralyzed. Griffin paralyzed, they had to pack them out. Blind, halt, withered, and everything. Many diseases come up on them instantaneously. Why? Because they doubt to believe that there stood a man that had dominion. What is dominion? Rule. What is the bride to do? Put all enemies under her feet. Brother, there's not supposed to be any devil. Triumph over the bride of Christ. I want to tell you something, friend. People think it's a little thing. 
Brother, I tell you, this is a, uh, something of such a mammoth size that my poor little mind can't hum- comprehend what Christ has for the bride in this hour. When you say body of Christ, when you say baptism of the Holy Ghost, when you say token, you're using words, brother, that the world's not worthy to even hear. No, her, no, sir, we see over here when God said, let there be life, there come forth a perfect creation of God. And then in the next chapter, you find out that God uh, made Adam a body out of the dust of the earth and put him in it. And then when he took from the side of Eve, why did he take Eve from Adam's side? Why? So there could be a disobedience and a fall. So that there might be a resurrection. Huh? All was well as long as Eve was in Adam's side. She was perfect. Adam was perfect. They had dominion over everything upon the earth. But then God, in order to be his different attributes, he had to have a fall. There had to be a fall. Fall what? Falling from the original. Perfect man, perfect perfect creation that had to fall from that. So God, in order for there to be a fall, God had to take out the side of Adam a bride. Is that right? Had to take out the side. Oh, I'm going to say something in a minute. Take Eve out of the side of Adam. And when she become, when she got out of the side of Adam, she became a byproduct. What am I saying? What is the byproduct? Not the original creation. It's a product, but not the original product. The original product, Eve was in Adam. There was the perfect will of God, Eve in Adam. Now as long as Eve was in Adam, she could not get into any trouble. She was perfected. She was perfect. Is that right? But when Eve come out of Adam, that's where all of the trouble began. That's where all the trouble began when she came out of the side of Adam. Now watch here. Now, but all works to the glory of God. Now Eve come out of the side of Adam. Now here we are down here on earth. Little boy grows up. He's 17, 18, 19, 20. No, he ain't interested in no girl. No, sir. He ain't interested until a certain girl come by that had a certain color hair that was so tall, that was such, such, that spoke just like the cook and, and this and that, and just something about her. Huh? Boy goes haywire. Goes haywire. Mashes his thumbs. He don't know where it's afternoon or morning. He don't know what's going on. He can't go to work. He, he, you talk to him, he ain't listening. Huh? Amen. What is that? Attraction. Amen. And they say, well, what is that? What's the matter with him? Attraction. That's the same thing they're talking about the bride of Christ today, see? Why? Why is it? Why is that boy attracted to that certain girl? Why didn't this one over there attract him? There was something down in him that come to life when he seen her. What they call, what we used to call it, love at first sight. How many heard that? Love at first sight. <clears throat> well, I'm getting ready to say something spiritual now. I have to talk to the master a little bit. And that's why that it is a normal thing for a, a boy and a girl uh, to be attracted to a certain uh, one and another, vice versa. What is it? Why? It's God. God took the part of Adam away from him. I'm all on. Where are you at this morning? So that he could be attracted back to her and her back to him. Amen. Amen. Huh? And then they become one again. Oh, Amen. 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 I, I have to get a little happy. I, I can't help it. Why? Wow. Eve come out of Adam. And she was part of Adam's spirit. And that's why Adam loved her. And that's why that he went out in disobedience to God to bring fallen Eve back again. See? See? It was love for his wife. It was love for his wife. 
That's why the Bible said, Husband, love your wife as Christ loved his bride. Is that right? Then it says, Women be in subjection to your husband in all things. Showing you there that it's a, a oneness. Let me say this. Until a woman recognizes that she is to have her husband rule over her all the days of her life and gives her spirit under her, what is her spirit? Her will. When she gets married and says, I do, yes, I'll be your wife. That's that. Where you go, I'll go. What you do, I'll do. Your God will be my God. Your land will be my land. Like Ruth and Naomi. How many of the story of Ruth and Naomi? And then she gives her spirit over to that man and becomes subject to him all the days of her life. And if she won't, and she never will, she never was your wife to begin with. I know that's hard, but I can get it like the Bible says. Now, God took out of Adam the enemy's part of Adam and put it in Eve a byproduct so that he will be attracted back to Eve, that Eve will be attracted back to him. Amen. Now, Amen. the bride was taken out of the side of Christ at Cal. Water, blood, and spirit, the bride, the three elements that make the bride come out of the side of Christ. And what is the attraction today? Jesus Christ has come in the form of a man. Amen. The God made flesh the, the, the lover of our soul. Amen. Is that right? Yes. And we were with him before the foundation of the world. Amen. And we went over this little denomination and nothing attracted it. We went over that little denomination and that man never attracted it. And we went over to this one and that one. And there was nothing in there that attracted us. Amen. But then Christ came. Amen. The, the one that we were mated for. Oh, God. Hallelujah. A predestinated Christ for a predestinated bride that came out of the side of Christ that's going back to the side of Christ. Amen. When that Christ came on the scene, there was an attraction. Brother, you got in the morning, the birds were singing. Oh, you went to bed at night, I don't care what kind, everything was rosy and wonderful. You had yeah. met your mate. You had met your Christ. You said, there's the one. Yeah. There's the lover of my soul. Yeah. Oh, brother, that's the truth. I can't understand it all. I'm so excited. I'm so full of joy. Why? What is the attraction? You found your mate. You found your predestinated mate. Hallelujah. Yeah. A predestinated Christ. A predestinated bride going back to the side of Christ. My, I wish I had a voice and I could really tell it like I want to. So what is it? We're attracted back to Adam Christ today because we came out of there. No man can come to me except he come out of me. No man can come back inside my side unless he come out of my side. All the Father giveth me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I will no wise cast out, but I will bring back in. Amen. And what happened today? We have the Word of God, the predestinated Word of God in Malachi 4 and 5 that's come today, that's brought back the Word of God, and through the Word of God we have the three elements, water, blood, and spirit, that's here today to uh, take the attracted bride. What was Malachi 4 and 5? It was the ministry of Jesus Christ, Hebrews 13, 8, back on earth to show you who you love. Amen. And then when you see Jesus Christ, the bride, the virgin, she fell in love with Christ. Yeah, she fell in love with Christ. Said, That's the one. That's the one. I love him. I don't love the other man. Man denominations, brother, was in the past. She fell in love with Christ, the love of her soul, her predestinated mate. They oh God, love this Lord. They was predestinated for one another. Yeah. And it is a love affair. Back to Eden, 
glory to God. I wish I could say it. I can't say it. It's too too much for me. I'm loved, though. I don't know about you. I found him. Oh, that didn't suit me. That didn't suit me. Nah, that ain't wrong. I don't like it. Uh, what do you think about it? Yeah, hey, I don't know. What do you think about No. No, I didn't hear it. Come over here. This guy's having a tent meet. Well, no, no. Amen. But he's a little man who walked up. Ah. And said, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, brother, is during the seek of the heart, something cried out, that's it, that's it. Oh, brother, like the little woman at the well, I took the water pot off of my head and set it down. Everything was in my head, I lost it and oh, set it man. down. And I said, come see a man. Come see a man that told us everything. That's not this the very Messiah. It's not this the very Amen. Christ that was promised in this hour. Amen. And what do we got, Lord God? We got a predestinated Christ, a predestinated Jesus Christ, and a predestinated bride going back to the side of Christ, Amen. going back to Eden with power, authority, and dominion over the earth. Oh, the birds of pieces of the air. No wonder the prophet of God said, the things that you see me do now in my ministry will only to be amateur to what Christ will do when he comes. Amen. What's it going to be when that great eternal plan of all ages come together in the fullness of the bride? What will it be when the headship, the bridegroom, comes to that little bride that is waiting for, oh God? For aeons of time. How he loves. Oh, friend, I tell you, there is a lack of revelation of how much Jesus loves the bride. Amen. What is the attraction in the bride? She's attracted to the bridegroom because she came out of his side. I think it's wonderful. When a young boy and a young girl first meet another, they may not say nothing, but when their eyes, when his eyes meet her eyes, there is an attraction. I'm talking about Christians now. I'm not talking about the filthy world. I'm talking about Christians. When their eyes meet one another, another's eyes, there is attraction. Daddy, you might as well forget it. Mommy, you might as well forget it. He's going back to her side as sure as I'm standing here this morning. She's going back to her side. That's why I believe that every boy and girl ought to fast and pray and get down on her knees and say, Is this the one, Lord? Is this the one, Lord? And then when they get married, they become one. Eve comes back and adds. Going back to her side as sure as I'm standing here this morning. She's going back to side. That's why I believe that every boy and girl ought to fast and pray and get down on her knees and say, Is this the one, Lord? Is this the one, Lord? And then when they get married, they become one. Eve comes back and Adam. And oh, I tell you, that's where all the trouble is today. We're living right up here at 19 and 69, going into 70, and Eve is still out of the side of Christ. But, brother, there will come a day when little Eve will crawl Amen. back into his eyes. And there's only one way. There's only one way back to the, our second hand of Jesus Christ, and that is the way of the water, the Amen. blood of the Spirit. Here, there's no other way back to his side. And the bride has got to climb back the other way, right back into his side, and he'll zip it up. Oh, my, safe in the side of our Abraham. Safe in the side of our Adam today. Safe in the side of our spiritual Adam Christ today. Oh, my, does that do something to you? To think that we have the three elements here today to take us back to the side of Christ. Now, notice here, 
Everything that doesn't come back to the side of Christ by water, blood, and spirit goes through the tribulation. The only safety place today, my friend, is to come back into Christ. All that comes back into Christ, Christ is going to take that body of believers in the rapture. The rest of those professed believers is going to go through the tribulation. Why? They did not come back into Christ. Now notice here that there was no judgment for Eve as long as she was in Adam. There was no harm that could come to Eve as long as she was in her Adam. Huh? Isn't it something that a real woman, I'm talking about a real woman, she don't like to work, she don't like to provide for herself. I want to say this to this church. I believe it's all right if you got a lot of bills, you're in debt, and you first got married, and your wife will work a little bit to help you, that's fine. But I'll tell you one thing, your little Eve needs to be home. I tell you, any woman, any good woman, any real good Christian woman, down in her heart, she wants you to be her provider. She wants you to be her protector. Oh, I tell you, something comes up, she can't handle it. She'll say, oh, if Daddy could only get here right away. She's not made to handle it, but you're made to be her protector. Her, oh, oh, Jesus. Little bride, you can only trust him now to be your savior, can't you? You can't trust him for a healer. You can't trust him for a protector. You can't trust him for a provider. Shame on us. After all he said, consider the lilies of the field, have you? That they neither toil nor reap not, and yet I say unto thee, Solomon, all of his glory is not arrayed one of these. He said, you consider the little birds, the little sparrows, not one follow to the ground, that your heavenly Father knoweth it not. Doth he not care more for you than the sparrows that fly through the air? Is that what he said? And yet, oh my, where are our providers? Where are this and all that? But I'm telling you that Jesus Christ, the lover of my soul, is going to let this world council of churches and the world order come to the place where you have no job, where you have no food, where you have no house to go to, he'll only be he'll not only be your savior, he'll be your provider, your protector, and a, your healer and everything else. That's why I believe that any real wife wants to stay home with a little apron on, learn how to cook, make daddy a nice little dish and keep his house clean for him when he comes in from work. Yeah, that's right. I may be kind of raking hard on that, but I, that's what I believe. I believe that she wants you to be a protector. She wants you to be her provider. That's why she got married. Is that right? And I've met men around the country claim to be the message and their little wives just dying to quit work. And then he just keep her, keep family and dead all the time. Keep mommy out there working. I, it's sinful, friend. It's sinful. It's not God's provided way and it never will be God's provided way. <clears throat> we said we got to have this. No, you don't. You just think you do. You just think you do. I believe if a man pays tithes, man pays tithes and lives before God like he ought to, God will supply his needs. He may put you through a trial, give you a little test, test and trial. Yes, sir. I, when my wife and I lived on about $35 a week for years. Wouldn't hardly take tithes or offerings. Nobody slept on the side of the road and done without and lived in shacks and no water, no bathrooms, no nothing. But when I went through a trial and God tested me and tried me on money, Turned down many, many offerings, many of them. And didn't want nobody ever say that I preached for money. And so then God blessed me. God blessed me where I, I didn't have to worry about finance. Gave me a pension and little brothers and things brings food. I don't, well, I don't ever even think about finance. Just go on and serve Christ. He told me that years ago. He said, do my will and I'll take care of everything else. But as long as I would do his will, no, sir. He would do it. As long as I let the preachers run here, run there, and done this and that. No, sir, I had to know. We didn't know where our next meal was coming from. Didn't know how we were going to pay the doctor bill. Didn't know if I could get her in the hospital, no money. People say, well, what are they going to do? I don't know. It somehow it was terrible. It always worked out. But then, as soon as I'd done God's will, I had a dream one night, and here come this check. 
four thousand some dollars. Well, I never had that much money in all my life put together hardly. There it come. I seen. I told my wife, there's going to be a check come in the house, four thousand some dollars. There it come. Paid all my bills, done everything. What, but what was it doing? God knew it. I come to the place I see Christ Jesus. He called me, Lord. I said, I've been going here, going there, listening to this preacher and listen to that preacher. And I'm and the bench are confused and everything. I said, now, Lord, I'm getting down on my knees and I, I ain't going to listen to I got a kind of spirit. I was following along like a puppy, just leaving around like a little puppy dog. And I had to get over that. And if Christ going to use me, said, I'm going to have to follow him. It's hard to love everybody. One brother said, come over here, move over here, do this. There it goes, sir. Well, let's go here. Let's go start. Let's go here in this meeting. There it goes. Wouldn't even consult the Lord. And I come to a place again and said, Lord, I want to do your will. I want to do your will. And I made up my mind. That was it. Boy, I really got it in my heart, and I knew it got something. That was it. So I said it. I was going to work. I, I felt, oh, if I don't want to come, I ain't going. Couldn't pull me around no more. And then when I did that, the Lord took care of me. Never has faith. And but God will try it. And I, I think that every little, every little woman becomes a bride. She's got to find her place in the home. She's got to learn how to cook. She's got to learn how to cook, how to keep house, how to raise her babies. And that's her calling. It's not a woman's call to be out here throwing around these factories and all these offices. It ain't the will of God. Of course, I'll be single girls that don't have a husband. But any single girl, unless she wants to just give her whole life, body, soul, and spirit to Christ, and, and is not, uh, <clears throat> is not uh, interested in marriage. But I think uh, we ought to get it down to the Bible. I think God will really bless our assembly like he wants to until he gets us down to that place. I, I'd rather eat beans and potatoes every afternoon and never have not even ground hamburger have my little wife home. I tell you, it's, it's terrible. How many believe that so? And oh, to see in the saw the little bride of Christ, the little virgin. What did she do? She's seen many boyfriends. She's seen many boys come by and they'd wink at her. But just something down in her heart, no, 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 that ain't it. But when a man called Malachi, four and five, come and said, this is him. Here, here's what he looks like. Now, you never did see him. You didn't know where he had brown eyes, blue eyes, and short and fat skin. But uh, it just, it's something down there. You just felt like you'd never seen that one. You'd never seen that one that you had an attraction to. No, no. People say, well, why haven't you got married? I've heard people say, well, I've just never found a man I was attracted to or a woman I was attracted to. What well, about the little typing out the little bride? Here she is on earth. This is winking at him. This come along with the tent ministry and wink at her. No, that ain't it. That ain't it. And she remained a virgin. She remained a virgin. Had a virgin womb. And then all at once a little bald-headed fellow from Jeffersonville, Indiana, come your way, and you heard about him being there, and you went over to the meeting, and he got up and preached, preached the word, the word, and then he said, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday forever. And he showed you how the color of his eyes was and hair, and there you seen, there you seen the one that you was attracted to right before your eyes. And you said, like Rebecca, I will go, I will go, I will go. Jesus Christ, the revealed Word of God, and you saw that. That was the attraction. That's for me. Let's bow our heads. That was the attraction. Now, why were you attracted to it? Why? Because you come out of Christ at Calvary. You was with him like in the loins of Abraham before the foundation of the world. And in this hour, Jesus Christ has come. He's appeared to love your soul, and you've been attracted to him. Maybe you thought, why, why, why? That's why. You say, well, why isn't this one over here? I just wasn't on the book. Your name was there. You was attracted. And now you're coming. You're lined up with the Word of God. You want to be with Christ, in Christ, more than anything else in this world. Friend, I tell you, the things that I'm preaching is going to become a reality soon. There's something got to happen. We're right up here to 1970. When Brother Bannon and I, he didn't say, it's thus saith the Lord, but it's good enough for me. He said, I believe 77 will usher in the millennium. Do you realize, friend, you've got to subtract three and a half years from the tribulation, and that only gives us at the most three years? Do you realize that... It, uh, are we just uh, talking, or is this reality that I'm speaking about this morning? This has got to happen. Oh, friend, have you been attracted this morning? Are you in love? 
Are you in love with the Lord Jesus? While the sister comes, plays the piano. Ain't that precious, friends? More of their heads bowed. Oh, God, I see precious men here separated from their families. You're going through all kinds of trials and troubles. What is an attraction? They're calling, Brother, Brother Rennie called me on the phone and said, Brother Bob, they've walked out down here. Said, but we can't get away from it. We know this is the truth. Oh, we can't get away from it. Said, we just want to be there so bad. Said, we'll be there as soon as we can. What is it? Why is it that some will leave houses, lands, and lots of businesses? Some leave the, some love the mountains. They'll give up anything. Oh, God. Why this and he'll leave his wife. Why this and he'll leave his farm. Just as sure as the world, brother. If he come out of Christ at Calvary, and if he was with Christ in the mind of God before the foundation world, brother, there's no land, there's no houses, there's no lands or lots. That'll keep you away from coming back in the sight of Christ. What is it? You're wanting to be married. I tell you something, when a little girl falls in love with that husband she's waited on, brother, I tell you, boy, there is a change. There is a change. You may stumble along, and, 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 but, boy, I tell you, when you find that mate here in this life, everybody don't say, what's the matter with Mary? What's the matter with Mary? You know, there's such a difference in her. What's the matter with Jane? I know she's so different. She's whistling, singing all uh, She's singing all the time. What's the matter with Bill? Well, he's whistling all day long, and he's a singing. I've never seen somebody so happy in all my life. I, I, I tell you, he just stays in the room there all the time and said, oh, what's the matter with him? Well, he met a little girl, <clears throat> met a little girl up the street. What is an attraction? And your family was, oh, you've lost your mind. Oh, uh, you're going to move. You mean after all this nice house? Well, the Lord more than wants you to do that. Good job you got. Uh huh. Oh, but they can't. You can't tell them. What is it? And you take a boy and girl in love. I mean, a real Christian boy and girl in love. They in love. They're gonna. Uh, as Brother Branham said, uh, he said, Brother Brother Branham, what do you think about me getting married to this girl? He said, Can you live without her? Can you live without her? Uh, no, sir. He said, will it, will, it, will it kill you? Will you die? Will you just about die if you don't have her? He said, yes, sir. He said, you better go marry her, boy, quick as you can. Now, I want to tell you, can you live without Jesus today? Can you live without him? Uh, would you consider houses, lands, and lost jobs, friends, neighbors, and put that in front of the love of your soul? No, sir. I tell you, a girl, she'll be born with a silver spoon in her mouth. Her daddy's got a fleet of Cadillacs. He owns a fuller soap company. He's worth a multitude of millions. But, brother, if she's attracted to that little boy down on the other side of the tracks with a pair of cover halls on that goes by, and her little tears drip off her cheek, and her dad said, No, he's on the wrong side of town. He ain't our people. Brother, just as soon as she gets old enough, brother, she'll slip out some afternoon. She's gone. She'll go over and sit down to an old, uh, to an old uh, a one room uh, apartment they got, a room and a half, and, and do without a car and, and ride the bus. She'll go to any means. She'll wash on her hands without an automatic. Huh? And people say, you know, her father is a multimillionaire, and she left all of that for that fellow. I can't see in him for my life what that, what that girl went after. Oh, and that's what they try to tell me about Jesus. They say, I can't understand why you moved here, why you moved there. I can't understand why you pray and cry all the time and all this. Oh, friend, do you understand what I'm trying to say? What is it? An attraction. Not by chance. No, sir. You was in the side of Christ at Calvary, and now you're attracted back to his side. Coming safely back in this side by the water, by the blood, and by the Spirit. Let us bow our heads and pray. How many here this morning have that love affair? I see your hands. You're attracted. You've done been attracted. You've seen Jesus Christ and you're attracted. Friend, I tell you, there is a people on earth that's going to bring these, pe bring these scriptures to place. Uh, it's not just chance. 
I know it may be hard for you to understand right now, but I want to tell you that these scriptures, somebody's got to fulfill these scriptures. He that has left houses, lands, and lots for the kingdom of heaven's sake. What is the kingdom of heaven? The token. What is the token? The body of Jesus Christ. The power of God. The authority of God in the bride of Christ. It is the body of Christ. The kingdom of heaven, the token, is one of the same. And we're coming to the hour, if you're really in love with that bridegroom, you're going to forsake houses, lands, and lots, friends, neighbors, wives, brothers, whatever it is. Dear Father, another Sunday morning has passed, Lord, and I have preached your word, Lord, here this morning. And Lord, our old bodies are so worn out and weary, and so much sickness and weariness among our flesh, Lord, is hard. But, Father, we know that there's deliverance on its way. Amen. There's something coming forth from God that will so stimulate and put power into these old bodies, Lord, they'll come to life. It'll get so great, Lord, that it'll be a complete deliverance one day soon. The old aches and pains won't be there no more. Or we'll be changed in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye. Father, help us to be like the little boy that rode his bicycle and won the prize. And all the little boys that couldn't ride the narrow road, they said, how did you do it? How did you do it? He said, well, where you all failed, you looked right down at the wheels. He said, I didn't look at the wheels. I looked straight ahead at the gold. And Lord... That's just the way it is now. Father, we can't look at our feet today. We can't look at these things around us, Lord, or look in the rearview mirror, Lord. Or we've got to look straight at the gold ahead, the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. If he don't come this morning, he'll come this afternoon. If he don't come this afternoon, he'll come, he'll come, he'll come tomorrow. And, Lord, we just day by day we forsake everything, Lord, and cleave unto thy word, Christ. Father, I pray that you'll bless every person here this morning. Lord God, take these sicknesses, these aches and pains away from the people, Father. Bless the little aching family, Lord, and all these here this morning that are sick, Lord. The enemy's pressing sore upon my old body this morning, Father. But we resist all of these things, Lord, and count them as nothing. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we press on. To the coming change of the body, Father, rapturing time. God, we've entered into the time of the rapture, time of revival. Oh, God, help us, Lord. We ought to be stirred to the uttermost of our souls. Father, bless your people here this morning. God, I pray that these things I spoke of, Lord, they'll chew on them all this week, Father. They'll think of these things. God, I pray that they may get the spiritual depth and the revelation out of what I tried to say in a poor little ignorant way. Lord, bless everyone. Now, Father, bless thy bride universal around the world. We pray that soon, Lord, you'll come, make up your body of believers, and take them home to be with thee forevermore. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's worship the Lord now. Let's sing, I love him. And you couldn't love him unless he first loved you. You couldn't love him unless he first loved you. I love him, I love him, because he Oh, God. 
top of the pyramid, after seven steps to the pyramid, there came a ministry. I'm talking about God had three Bibles. One of them was in the heavens, in the zodiac. It's perfect. The zodiac is perfect. The creative God set every sign in its place. The sign, friend, if you only knew, see. If you only knew, see, I see in the great revelation of God in this hour, things so great people don't even know it. People only knew how great revelation. Some things can't even tell people. High. Things know about the message just as plain and simple as anything ever preached laying right before you. See? How the greatness and the mightiness of the hour that we're living in. It'll be something that'll take place that'll be breathtaking before long. Just waiting for that hour when that old world cast church is moved in, you're going to see it. I want to see it. God help every soul to be ready. God Help every person here to know that you got each day by day now and free more will. Do what you want to. But I pray that you give yourself to Christ like never before. Because when it's, the season's right, it'll come. Sickle will be thrust in. So get right. Lay in the presence of divine revelation, the Son of God, and get right. Zodiac, God put a Bible in the heavens. Zodiac. Then God put a Bible in the pyramid. And the pyramid teaching, not we don't just teach pyramids, but it's true. We have a greater Bible to us this year. But at the top of the pyramid, where the little lip is at the top, there came a ministry. Just like Jesus Christ. And that was Malachi 4 and 5. And in the pyramid teaching, right at the seventh step, there came a guard out with a sword and challenged every person that come there. The seventh step. With a sword. And that person could not come into the presence of the king's chamber until that guard came forth and challenged them. Friend, you've been challenged at the seventh step. And you're going to have to come to the word of God to come into the presence of the king's chamber. Malachi 4 and 5 has come at the top of the step, Laodicean church age, and he's challenging every professed believer. Standing there as a guard. What is the guard? The king's chamber. What is in the king's chamber? The mercy seat. God help us, Lord. Message so great. Thank that the key message of all ages fell into our hands. What little poor disunit bride, just devil is beat down, God, may you send something for it. I tell you, the aches and the pains in here this morning, the whole spirit can hardly move. You're sitting there, you're weary, your flesh is worn out, you're sick, see. Won't it be wonderful when Jesus Christ gives us a change? Many of you just drive and you don't get no sleep. Sometimes I go to bed Sunday night and I can't stand to go to bed thinking about you up on the highway. That's right. And here I stand, Lord, it's just one little old vindication. Just a word. You know what a burden it puts on me, people driving here. So now I think, well, I ought to call them and stay home this week. Now I think, well, Lord, and scripture comes to me, he that's left houses, lands, and lots for the token sake. Why is that? I don't know. But friend, I look in the word of God and I see it's a word. And if I look and say, well, why? I, I can't do that. See, all I know is the word said it'd be that way. And then I think I the sick and the weary. And I see myself so needy of the anointing and the power of the Holy Spirit. And it gets me dry. Oh, my God, I feel like I've got boxcars upon my shoulders sometimes. You don't know what it is. You know, just like a frightened fox, I want to run to a hole and hide. No, you have to stand out there. One day he'll come. He that endureth unto the end, the same shall receive the token. He'll come one day, friend, and there'll be a deliverance for you. The cripples will walk, the blind will see, 
And there'll be such a mighty deliverance that finally you'll even be delivered from your own self. That's right. The old evil nature that's giving you all your trouble. Your old body right now that's aching this morning, pains in your head, and you're weary, you're sleepy. You'll never get sleepy again. You'll never know what it is to ever have to sit down and get tired. There'll be no tiredness. There'll be no weariness. There'll be no aspirins. There'll be no headaches. You won't need no medicines. You won't need no surgery. You'll have a new body like his glorious body. How many want that day to soon come? Let's sing only believe. Only believe. Yes, Lord. All things are possible, oh God. Only believe. Only believe. Only believe. Remember when the message goes forth again, I believe with all my heart, 
I don't know where it'll come from, who all go in, but when the message comes forth, it's going to be on God's divine plan for this hour, and that is a oneness. God has done all these things up until now to bring the people back to his side. And I tell you, woe be to that man, friend. I would rather it be better that you'd never been born to come up against the revelation that God's coming forth in this hour. I tell you, it's such of a mammoth, fearful thing as shudder to even think of. God's great divine plan for this hour is to bring a oneness back on the earth. And the only plan, the only one provided way that God has to do that, and anything else beside that is Antichrist. It's Antichrist and of the wicked one. So whatever he do, we're believing on to Christ. Look at them. They were believing on the Christ, believing unto Christ. That's why, that's why the things are in the condition that they are this morning. That's why we don't see miracles and great powers and great joys and total victory all the time. It's because the bride is still outside of Christ. And that's what makes us so raking hard wherever we're going to preach these things. It, it makes scares people, see. But, brother, if we're going to get this thing done, we're going to have to get it like an instant book. There's no use keep hiding from it. We might as well face it. That, brother, don't rest day or night till you get back into the sight of Christ. There must be a people come back into the sight of Christ. You cannot come up any other way than by the way of the water, the blood, and the Spirit. And when the Spirit comes, it places you back into his sight. And now, what is the trouble now? We're like the disciples at the foot of the mountain. Foot of the mountain. Bottom of the pyramid. Down there at the foot of the mountain. What happened? There was one on top of the mountain. On top of the mountain. That wasn't believing on to God, unto God. He was believing in God. He was believing in God. He said, it's not me that doeth my works, but my heavenly Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. How many know that? Amen. What was the apostles? Now, he was believing in God. Jesus Christ was believing in God. Down at the foot of the mountain, what was it? Was a church that was getting ready to be a bride. But down at the foot of the mountain was only the material for it. And they was believing unto Christ. They was believing unto Christ. And then when they come down to the foot of the mountain, there was a man there said, come fell down at Jesus' feet, Master. He said, what can I do for you? He said, thy apostles could not heal my little boy. He said, he is demon-possessed. He's an epileptic. He said, oftentimes the devil taketh the little fellow and throws him into the fire and burns him. He's scarred all over, I guess. Oftentimes it takes him and throws him into the fire. Can you imagine that? Every time he'd pass a fire, maybe the old devil would take him and throw him in the fire. See, so he'd take a fit and fall in the fire. See how that devil would? Why didn't he take a fit over the other side of the house? No, I'd throw him in the fire. I want to kill him. He said, Lord, have mercy upon me. Can't you help me? He said, Thy disciples could not cast it out. Jesus said, O oh, perverse and wicked generation, how long must I suffer with thee? Bring the boy hither to me. And when they started to get the boy, what was the difference? There's a man that knew what he was, that was in God, had the faith of God. And there was another group of people that's believing unto Christ. They was not in Christ yet. Is that right? Why? Oh, God. God, help you to see this, Lord. Why? Why couldn't he cast it out? Why couldn't he? Because they was only believing unto Christ. Why couldn't it? Because the water, the blood, and the spirit had not been given. How many see that? Amen. The side had not been opened up. In other words, it's hard to come back into a hole if there is a hole made. Amen. And the way had not been made. But Christ said, you will do it. The works that I do shall ye do also, and greater works than these shall you do. In that day, in that day when the ways open up, when the ways open up, you'll know that I'm in the Father, the Father of me, and I and you, and you and me. There's going to be a oneness again back to Eden. What happened to Calvary? 
the Roman didn't know what he'd do, but he looked up and he seen the way maker. And he reached up and stuck a big sword in his side and made a way. Oh, God. There it come, water, blood, spirit. And then what happened? There come 120 on the day of Pentecost by one spirit. He took them, shh, submerged them right back in there. Then what happened? Now watch the difference. Before that, the demon act, they couldn't do nothing with it. What happened then? When they come back in Christ on the day of Pentecost, bless y'all, what happened? There they come, out of gate, beautiful, went down, said, Silver and gold, have none. <laughs> but such as I have, give out in the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. Oh, God, I would to the Lord that happened this morning that every believer here would be placed into the side of Jesus Christ. Friend, I tell you, there would be a something that would shake not only the thing, it would shake the world. Now, it's going to be as sure as I stand here. I'll, I'll tell you, to, thus saith the Lord to me, it's the Word of God. It's the, there will be a group of people come back into the side of Christ. Now, what would happen here this morning if while I yet spake these words, the Spirit of God came to all those that believing on the Christ and placed them into Christ? There would be a revival breakout that would shake the world. You couldn't bring the sick in here. They couldn't stand it. They'd be made whole. The blind and see and the lame and walk, the dead would be raised, and the gospel would be preached in the power of his resurrection. How many want that more than you want anything else in life? Amen. We'll gather ourselves together. I'll tell you in the name of the Lord. We'll gather ourselves together and get the oneness of mind on that. It has got to come. Amen. It absolutely is the promise of the hour. So we can have it here, and we should never let that objective that we have here pass from our sight. It should be uttermost in our life. Now let's sing one more chorus only believe and be dismissed. Believe it in Christ. Believe it in Christ. These signs shall follow them that believe in Christ. We're not only going to believe on him, but we're going to believe in him then. And then you know what you'll have then? One faith. You'll have one faith, one Lord, and one baptism. Come on. You'll have one faith, and it'll be the faith of the Lord Jesus Christ. How many want that faith? Contend for that faith as wants to live the saints. Lord, I believe. Lord, I believe. All things are possible.
Lord be with you.